Hello viewers, my name is Jordan Golson and this is the Lightyear Zero, which is the first solar powered car that you can buy if you live in Europe and have 250,000 euro. But it's still an impressive achievement and I came all the way to Spain to drive it. And Spain because it is very sunny here and there's lots of sun and we are generating 620 watts of electricity as we drive along. And that's pretty cool because Instead of needing to plug in every single time, you can just leave your car parked outside in the sun, which normally you don't want to do because it'll be 7 million degrees in here by the time you come back to it. But in this case, you want it to charge because it'll generate about 44 miles of range, theoretically, in a full sunny day in a place like this. In the US, if you had it in Phoenix or Colorado or Palm Springs, something like that, where it's super sunny, you could even generate thousands of miles a year worth of electricity just off the sun. Now you might wonder, why did people not do this before? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Number one, it is expensive. The technology didn't really exist to sort of cover a hood and a roof and a rear deck with solar panels like this. And it's curved in two directions. It's curved left and right and front and back, which is really hard to do because solar panels are incredibly fragile. If you just bend them a little bit, they'll shatter and break. So what they did is they cut the panels into a much smaller size. It's a couple inches by a couple inches and there's 782 of them across the entire car broken up into 28 little blocks. That's the other problem with solar power is if half the panels on your roof have no sun at all and the other half have full sun, you're not going to be able to generate power off the other ones because it's really complicated. They have to go through controllers and all that. And basically, if half your panels are covered in sun and the other half aren't, you don't get any power at all. By breaking it into those 28 little blocks, if one block is blocked, then the others will still be able to generate power. And there's even a feature. So if a bird craps on your car, it'll be able to tell you because it'll know that a certain panel is generating less electricity than the ones around it. A bird shit mode. Neat. The other problem is that solar panels really do not generate very much power. Even though there's five square meters of solar panels on this, the maximum it can generate is one kilowatt of electricity. And that's with the sun in the perfect position and just the right amount of cloud cover because you want a little bit but not too much at the right angle and the car parked in the right place and all of these things that go into that. And so we're doing pretty well. We're at 640, so we're at 64% capacity of what these panels can do. And here now I can pass this slow moving van here, put my foot down. It's not a ton of power, but it doesn't need to be. It's not pretending to be a crazy fast vehicle like that. Perhaps even more impressive than all the solar panels that are on this car is how incredibly efficient it is. It only uses 105 watt hours per kilometer on average, which is incredibly efficient. That is significantly better than even the best EV from anybody else, whether it's a Tesla or Lucid or anything like that. That works out to about 168 watt hours per mile. And they've done that in a bunch of different ways. Just by looking at the car, you'd think that all of the work was done in aerodynamics. And there was a lot of aero work done. It's got a probably better than 0.19 drag coefficient, which is absurdly slippery. So you can do things like turn off the regen in the car and just let your foot off and the car just keeps gliding. It's like you're a spaceship with the engine turned off. There's so little drag that the car just keeps rolling. It's really weird. And when another journalist explained it to me earlier after he drove the car, I was like, what, what are you talking about? But then I experienced it for myself and it was totally different. It, it just is an odd, odd feeling to take your foot off the gas and have nothing happen at all. And you just sort of slowly slow down. You really have to feel it or actually not feel it. We're going 100K here, take my foot off the throttle, nothing happens. It's like the cruise control is on. We're just rolling along. And so, yeah, okay, now we're down to 95K, but it's been eight seconds or something since then. And we just keep going. And the little energy meter over on the left says we're using 0.5 kilowatts, but we're generating more than that from the sun. So the car itself is extremely aerodynamic. It doesn't have side mirrors, which is why you have these screens. There's little cameras built into the side of the car looking backwards. Of course, you can't see out the rear because it's covered in solar panels. And so you have another screen right here for your rear view mirror. 
And those, by the way, mean you can't buy it legally in the US, among other reasons, but that's one of the biggest ones. It does have an active grill at the front covering the radiator in case it needs cooling, but most of the time that can stay closed. That improves efficiency. The wheel covers are completely aerodynamic and flat, and there's a reason for that. We'll get to that in a second. And then on the rear wheels, there's actually another aero cover covering the wheel itself to improve efficiency even more. Underneath, it's almost completely flat. So in every little way, it's basically as aerodynamic as possible, except for the rear. The aerodynamicist told me she really wanted it to come to a point at the end, but that's not very feasible because you don't want a car that is 72 feet long when you're trying to drive around a small European city. And so they had to compromise at this, which is about five meters in length. But it looks unusual. Driving through the little Spanish town here, you do get some looks because it's a little odd. A lot odd, actually. But then it just looks like a car after a while. Four wheels, headlights at the front, taillights at the back. You just drive it around. What's really interesting to me is the motors. Now, I've driven vehicles with four motors before, one for each wheel. But on this one, the motor itself is actually hidden inside the wheel. And so it just spins and that's what makes it work. And this does add to something called unsprung weight, which the performance and handling engineers all hate. Each motor is about 37 kilograms or 50, 60 pounds, something around there. But the wheels themselves are extremely narrow. And so you gain a little bit of weight back just by having smaller wheels, smaller tires. That's all weight that is saved by making it narrower. You also save overall weight by not having as many gears and drive shafts and props and all those things that go into having, say, one motor sending power to two wheels, a differential, all that stuff. So they get rid of that. In total, this isn't exactly a performance car. You're not gonna, you know, go do crazy G's on the slalom. The whole car only weighs 1,575 kilograms, which is 3,400 pounds, something like that. It's very light, especially for an EV with a big battery pack. This has a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, by the way, but it still can go 388 miles, and that's at 110 kilometers an hour, about 68 miles an hour. So it can go almost 400 miles at highway speeds. And so all that work on efficiency from the aero and the motors, inverters, which are designed entirely in-house, 99% efficient. The motors, which are co-developed with a Slovenian supplier, are 97% efficient. But all you need to know is this is probably the most energy efficient car on the market or that's ever been made. There's only a few one-off prototypes that have cost millions of dollars to make that can do better. This thing's made almost entirely out of carbon fiber on the exterior, except for glass panels and composite where the solar panels are, things like that. It's been built to be as light as possible, and it still has a relatively reasonable price tag. 250,000 euro for all the efficiency and things, this would have been a million dollar hand-built prototype a few years ago from a big company like Mercedes-Benz or something like that. And now it's this Dutch startup has got this thing and they're gonna put them on sale later this year. So I came out here as a solar car skeptic. It was always, why would you bother putting them on a car? It's not gonna generate enough power to make a difference, all that. It makes me wonder why other car companies don't care about efficiency as much. And I think it's probably why until the last few years, nobody really cared about miles per gallon either, including most car buyers in America. Why would a company spend more money on something that is really hard to advertise and most people don't care about? Now we have a new opportunity and now we have a new car company focusing solely on efficiency. And I do wonder what the long-term plan is for Lightyear. They say they wanna build cars, but really it's a technology company and they need to prove out solar. In a way, it's like the original Tesla Roadster from 2008. It's a proof of concept for can you build a car that has solar panels on it and do something meaningful with them. At least from this prototype, they've done it. Now, they're not gonna come out with a Model S. The next car, which is weirdly called the Lightyear 2, is going to be a much more affordable vehicle. They're aiming it to be around 30,000 euro in a couple years. We'll see if they hit that target between inflation and supply chain and all that. They've partnered with a vehicle manufacturer in Finland to put it together, which it's an established company. This isn't like, 
oh, how are we going to put our factory together? No, they've got that part figured out. They're going to have somebody else do it, which is probably the smart way. That's how Apple makes iPhones after all. And so we'll just see if they make it. But the interior of this car, they warned us that it was a prototype. I mean, this is a pretty far along prototype. I've seen cars that are basically held together with bubble gum and duct tape. This thing's remarkably complete. There's only a couple things like the trim on the steering wheel. This is going to be wood, but right now it's a 3D print and then there's a 3D print down here. They still don't even look that bad and I feel like you could just sell it that way and people would think it was cool that, oh, it's a 3D print steering wheel, whatever. That's the Lightyear Zero solar powered car. We're still generating 630 watts. My laptop could run on that no problem. And they're gonna have USB ports down here that can provide 60 watts each in the final production vehicle which is you can power a laptop off that and you could just sit in the sun, have the air conditioning running, do your laptop, do whatever, and not actually drain your battery pretty much at all. If you enjoyed this review, click here to get another one. Thank you so much for watching. Drive safely.